Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include EU wants Sri Lanka to ensure justice for victims of protest killings. European Union questions how Italy telecom watchdog set broadband prices. EU cap could reopen bank bonus wounds. Europe donates £2 million for Congolese refugees in Uganda. Plus, Hungary grappling with suspension of vital EU funds. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news. First from our homepage. The European Union urged Sri Lanka to ensure justice for the victims of a recent military shooting on protesters demanding clean drinking water and for those hurt in a spate of attacks on mosques by Buddhist-led mobs. The EU delegation in Colombo said in a statement that it was concerned by the recent incidents, including the death of three civilians during a protest in Welawaria, town northeast of Colombo, and a mob attack on a Colombo mosque. It's all well and good, the Bureau buffoons gallivanting around the globe, preaching the gospel according to Brussels. But what about the plight of the folks back home? Sorry, but it feels to me like they're throwing stones in greenhouses. The European Commission has questioned the way Italian telecoms watchdog AGCOM arrived at changes planned to wholesale broadband prices, claiming the move could cramp the ability of market players to decide on prices in Italy. Now, we've been reporting on this for a while. Neely Crows is the key commissioner behind the drive, but we feel that in the end this will simply drive out the diversity in the market. Besides which, this idea of regulating and controlling the free market is in direct conflict with the Keynesian economics philosophy, which the EU purports to follow. Europe's banks could be heading for another showdown over pay. The European Union's misguided bonus cap has forced them back to the drawing board when designing compensation policies. Institutions like HSBC are now sounding out investors about the least damaging way of complying with the rules. Though higher salaries are likely, shareholders could demand tougher conditions for variable pay in return. Well, this makes me laugh. Talk about the tail attempting to wag the dog. The banks does run the show, so this gesture by the EU over pay is simply theatrical. The globalist banksters forced financial deregulation, magically created an enormous derivatives market out of nothing. Mr Barroso, the banks own you and the rest of your kleptocrats, so wind your necks in. The United Nations World Food Programme in Uganda has received a contribution of $2.6 million from the European Commission's Humanitarian Aid and Civil Protection Department to support newly arrived refugees from the Democratic Republic of Congo. It beggars belief where these departments think that they're getting the money from. Perhaps Dynamo, Magician Impossible, is creating it from thin air. Oh, sorry, I forget. It's Draghi, finance man incredible, rocking the Heidelbergs. The bottom line is the Eurozone debt burden is way beyond a trillion euros and rising like an Ariane rocket heading for the stars. The European Union has suspended most development programmes in Hungary due to shortcomings with schemes and the country could end up losing 600 billion forints in EU funds this year, the government said. Janice Lazar, the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, said on Monday that the government was in talks with Brussels on regaining access to funds which financed important projects such as road building and social cohesion programmes. Apparently, funding has ceased whilst an investigation takes place into possible misappropriation of funds and audit failure. Well, look at the pot calling the kettle black. Today in our video library, with the crisis in Syria escalating alarmingly, I thought we would take a look at what is happening on the ground in the EU in relation to this conflict. Now in this report from Russia Today, we find that many youths are being radicalised and now many are taking up arms and being sent out to Syria to fight on the front lines. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.